Hey, how are you? Um, I realise I'm wearing a lot of makeup today. We had a launch earlier today for some of the Alliance League coverage with Air Sport and I'm going to be one of the presenters. We had to go for official photos. So I got the hair did, the face did. Looks rather heavy here underneath my really unflattering light in my spare room slash office. But since I had the fair hair done and the face done, I said I had to do a video. So I've done, this is just a quick video talking about the things I've learned in my first semester of med school, how I survived it, and I think survival is a great word because I had no science background and I thought I went in prepared, but I wasn't really. And I made a lot of mistakes along the way, which cost me time, and I'm sure they cost me marks and exams as well. And uh, here's just some of the things I learned, and hopefully you won't make the same mistakes, which will make your life easier when you go to med school. First things first, you can't learn everything, and you will fall into this trap unless you really tell yourself at the start you're not going to fall into this trap. Basically, they throw you huge volumes of work, like massive. The amount of information is like something I have never seen. And I've sat in court cases that went on for months and you just can't learn it all. You will go down rabbit holes trying to memorize it. You'll work yourself up into a panic trying to memorize it and it won't work. So I discovered for me, the best thing to do is rather than spending 24 hours trying to learn off the names of muscles in the forearm, I decided what I would do is I was going to learn the big picture, understand what happened there, how it kind of happens, understand the main muscles and the main parts that do that kind of thing and then work from there. Once you understand that kind of big picture, the smaller things fall into place. And it took me about four months to cop onto that, but once I did, learning things like anatomy became a lot easier. That takes me on to point number two. Medicine is a different language, like it's a whole new language. For me, because I came with no science background, everything is brand new. I couldn't pronounce the words, I couldn't spell the words, I didn't know what the words meant. I'm still learning, I'm a lot better now than I was at the start of the year. I think though that really held me back in one sense because when other people were nodding along vigorously when the teacher was saying something I was constantly googling what that word meant trying to figure out what it was. I was bilingual before I started studying in med school, now I call myself trilingual and my third language is medical Latin because it seems to me it's all Latin words for bones and body parts and illnesses that I never heard of. Now I'm getting there, I'm still not there yet but I'm a lot better than I was and just accept that if you don't have that language that's okay, you don't learn French in a day either and you certainly ain't going to learn medicine. Two of the biggest tips I could give you is find your people and find your method. We'll go to our people first. You need to get yourself a nice group of people who will tell you when you're being an idiot, who will tell you to stop panicking, who will help you along, who you'll help along when you have skills that you can help them, who will have laughs with you, who will make sure you're not crying too hard, and who generally will make life much easier for you. It makes it easier to study for exams. People will have tips, hints and tricks. Some people will know some things better than others, and it also they understand you're a tribe. And I mentioned earlier about survival. We're all on this island together and these people will help you. Like I discovered my own crew. I mean, they might not like it, but they're stuck with me now. I'm hanging around with them, whether they like it or not. I'm holding on to them like a limpet. Um, we're like from people, we're scattered from all over Ireland. There's people from Canada. There's a few people from the United States in our group. And we really get on and we're all really different. And I'm sure we probably know each other at times as well, but there's a kindness there and as well as that we all understand what the other person is going through and I think it's true what they say all the doctors that we've spoken to and people who are teaching us they all say the friends you make in med school are friends for life and it makes sense because they've been through the trauma of it all and they've been through the fun of it all as well and I don't think anyone really understands it until you're in there but once you find your crew hold on to them into your life and that brings me on to my other point is find your study method once you find your crew figure out how you best study um, reading and rereading ain't going to cut it in medical school. It might have gotten you through your undergrad, it might have gotten through your career if you went working afterwards. It's not going to work for medical school. For me, I tried that and it got me through just about, but I figured out far too late that active recall is the way to go about it. So I create flashcards all the time. I do them online using the Osmosis website and it just constantly means I'm consistently checking myself, but not like too hard, just like maybe half an hour a night of going through stuff that I might have done the last few weeks, just click, 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 going through, and it reinforces it because your mind gets really lazy and really tired unless you actively work it. And the information sinks in quicker and it sinks in deeper, and you'll be really grateful for that come exam time. To reiterate this point, cramming does not work. Cramming does not work. Cramming does not work. It didn't work for me, it won't work for you, it didn't work for anybody else in medical school. There's just far too much material. There's far too much from anatomy, clinical, physiology, pharmacology, tablets, medications, do's and don'ts, people, doctors, teachers. There's just too much. You're not going to learn, for example, the brachial plexus, the liver, 
the GI tract and some pharmacology in time for a test on Monday morning if you start on Friday night. It's just not going to happen. You're going to fail before you even get to your exams. You're not even going to make it to your second semester. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm warning you. Here's one that a lot of people struggle with. Maybe not me so much, but a lot of people in my class, I know they did. You're not going to be the smart kid anymore. Now, for me, I got through school fairly easily. Didn't really work that hard. I did my homework every night. Same as my undergrad. You know, I did enough to get by and I got much better marks than somebody who worked to get, who just did enough to get by. Same in my career. I worked hard, but like not to the point where I'm working now. Um, so you just have to put the notions that you were once the smart kid in the class throw that out the window unless you're in the very small minority you're going to be struggling in a class full of people who all got A's and they're leaving certs and B's and did really well in their undergrads with very little work um, and that can be hard on the ego and that's where you have to learn to like bite the bullet swallow your pride ask questions find people to help you you're not going to know everything and you just have to accept that the only person you're in competition with is yourself so set out your own little mental chart know where you're starting, know where you want to end, don't let anything else deflect from that, don't let the smart kids put you off, don't feel ashamed, you'll probably fail a few, it'd be very rare to go through medical school without failing something, and that's okay, so long as you learn from it, and remember, you're in competition with nobody else but yourself. Now this one is an important one, and that schedules some fun. I found myself, since I went to med school, since say, since August, I didn't have any fun. I used to find myself saying, I'll do that after I study, I'll do it when I finish studying this chapter, I'll do it once I know this. And then by Christmas, I kind of realised that I hadn't done any exercise, hadn't gone to any workout classes, I'm a Pilates instructor qualified, I didn't go to any Pilates classes or do any practice here that I normally would do at least five days a week, and my body was paying for it, and so was my mind. In fact, when you take into account everything I know about sport and exercise psychology, um, it's ridiculous that I let myself get this way because of studying and trying to focus on that. In fact, if I was your doctor and you came into me with any kind of illness, if you're in any way able-bodied and mobile, I'd tell you, go outside, get some fresh air, do some exercise. It's essential for your physical and mental health. The same is true for any doctor, the same is true for anyone doing anything hard in life or easy in life. But you need to have that balance. So now, it's a, I realise now it's as important to me as scheduling my study and scheduling my work. I need to schedule in some fun as well. So now I make sure at least three times a week I block off an hour just to go for a walk, go for a quick jog around the place. It ain't going to be fast, but at least it's getting me out of here and it makes you more productive as well. And I don't know why we do this to ourselves. Look after your mental health, get some exercise outside and you'll be more productive and you'll work harder in a shorter space of time. So just do it. Your body will thank you for it, your waistline will get a bit tighter, and your mind will work a bit harder too. What's not to love? And finally, I know I've only done a few months, but you get to see the coolest and the most amazing stuff, and it really just reinforces that I'm doing the right thing. In the space of a few months, I've done dissections, I've learned things about the body, I've heard body, held body parts in my hands, I've learned pharmacology, physiology, I've learned how to do physical exams, I've spoken to doctors, I've seen and heard about amazing cases, I'll be meeting patients soon, and that's just a few months, and it just kind of reinforces that in a few years' time, kind of terrifyingly, that people out there will be trusting me with their lives. And that's amazing and terrifying and it just kind of reinforces that this is why we work hard because this is important you need to know where things are and you need to know how they work but there's no need for it to run you into the ground and that's what keeps me going this is so cool and um i'm loving it so i just figured out just keep doing it and i've just figured out a way now to just be more efficient now i'm learning it so um i hope this is helpful i hope it's helpful for me too i'm going to kind of like put these things into practice for the second semester and hopefully I'll be in a much position, better position come the next exams and I've learned the hard way so hopefully you won't have to.